Hey guys, there's more information here in terms of discrete random variables. So, our objective is, here's 6.2, we are transforming, combining random variables. Fifth edition, that's from chapter section 6.2. Third edition, you're in 7.2. Now, you should have already put this in your calculator. If you have not done so, please do it. And then when you do that, I need you to put down the mean there and the standard deviation. Remember here, this mu, now we're in degree, that is the population mean, and then that sigma is the standard deviation of the population. Remember we put it into the calculator, and I use my first vars. So let's remind ourselves of how we get to first vars. Of course, I put my data in my L1. And then I go to stat over to calc. You can see first bars right here. L1 is my default. And here are my values. And I can see I have my mean. And yes, this is the mean of the sample, but it's also understood that we're going to have a large enough sample size that we can use this same one for the mean of the population. And then we have here the standard deviation of that. Um, um, the population is going to be 8.8. .8. So let's write that down in our list, on our chart, rather. Okay, so now we have this. Now the next one says, I want to add 8 to every one of them. So as I go back to my list, go back to my stat, edit, I'm highlighting my L2. So I'm going to say L1 plus 8, and then press Enter. Here are my new values. Then I'm going to quit out of it. Actually, I probably don't have to, but I always do. And I'm going to clear. And I'm going to go um, stat over to calc. Okay, now my L2 is what I'm looking at. So I L2. Now let's look at it. Here is our new mean. But ha, huh, here's my standard deviation. So let's make a note of it. Now go ahead and finish that for the rest of um, these scenarios. And you should get these answers. Now the next question asks us to come up with a general rule. And if you notice what happened here was that in this case the mean is the original mean. Here is 8 more than that mean. Here is 23 more than that mean. Here is 7 less than that mean. But the standard deviation is the same. So let's talk about standard deviation being the same first. Here it makes sense because all we did is shuffle this thing over. Shuffled it over 8. Think of 8 people. Well, look at my 4 snubby fingers. And here I'm going to move over 8 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, da 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 da. My stubby fingers are just as wide. Okay. And that's all the standard deviation is. Remember, it's a range of scores. So it doesn't matter if I moved it over 8, if I moved it um, um, down 7, if I moved it over 23. They're still the same fat fingers as they move along. along. So that's going to give us the following equation. So yes, it is the mean. And then all we did was add, in this case, as I look at the y equals mx plus b idea, all I did was add the slope because that is the shift. So here's your mean, and every time you just added the slope. And then if I look at my standard deviation, what happened? Here, we said it didn't change. Now, I need to go back and explain this mean a lot better. I am adding 8 to each one of them, so that means everything is adding 8 pounds or giving all of them 8 more dollars or... Okay, um, or adding 23 pounds to them. Everybody gained 23 pounds or everybody has 23 more steps they have to take. So it makes sense that if that's the case, everybody is moved by that constant right there. The same thing here. 
subtracting seven. Subtract everybody lost seven pounds. Wish I was in that group. Everybody um, went seven feet um, below um, sea level. Okay. All of them did the exact same thing. So whatever the average was, it is adjusted by the movement that everybody um, did. So that's where that formula came from. Now as I look at this next one here, and your calculator will confirm everything that we just said. So now let's look at our information. Now we're going to multiply every problem by 6. Well here, as I look at, go into my stats, go into edit, clear that, and it says I'm going to take my L1 and multiply it by 6. Here are my new values. So now I'm going to go to my first bars. And remember, I'm looking at my L2. Now let's look at our mean. Let's look at our standard deviation and let's make a note of it. So here's the value of our new mean when I took the old data, multiplied it by 6, and here's the new standard deviation. Now I want you guys to go ahead and finish this off right here for when it's 15x and then 1 half x. Now go ahead and check your answers. And as you look at this right here, as you compare it to the first mean and standard deviation that you have, what's the difference between this value and that value? Well, it's this times 6. What's the difference between this value and that value? It's times 6. Okay, this value and that value, this is 15 times that, here this is 15 times that, here this is a half. Okay, so from there we should be able to come up with our general rule. That the mean of B sub X, because remember that's nothing but equivalent to the idea of slope, right here, here, is going to be the value of B times whatever the mean is. And the same thing for the standard deviation. If we're talking about the standard deviation of B sub X, that's going to equal B times whatever that standard deviation was. Okay, so that's it for tonight. Just want you guys to take these notes, and we'll pick up on this tomorrow in class.